This is Careers Clinic. It's not always easy to find a new job, but changing your career is even more challenging if you're doing it wholesale. Half the world thinks you've lost your mind. Headhunters say you'll never work again. Your relatives contribute to the old, I told you so, routine. But for many burned out or multi-talented folks who are sitting on skills they're not getting a chance to use, changing fields is the only way to keep from losing their marble. So how can you identify with what will suit you best? Well, to discuss it further, James Innes joins us. Morning, James. Uh, very good morning to you, sir. Hello, hello. Founder at the CV Centre and the author of five best-selling books all about managing your career. This is the $64,000 question, James, but how do you know when a career change is right for you? How do you feel that moment? Where is the sweet spot? <laughs> well, that is, it is indeed a very good question. I think if you're feeling uninspired, like you're stagnating, uh, feeling unfulfilled, I mean, obviously, that can be the case in in any job. You don't necessarily need to change your career. But in particular, if you're feeling that you're not doing what you're cut out to do, what your um, skills and your experience, what they equip you to do, um, then definitely I think you should start considering the possibility of of looking to career change. You need to enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. So if you're not enjoying your work, you feel you're being underutilized and that you could apply what you've learned during the course of your career better elsewhere, then definitely, and obviously Christmas is a perfect time to do Mm -hmm. that. You should have a bit of time on your hands after the mince pie. (laughs) and do give it some thought, discuss it with friends and family. Yeah, and maybe further impetus to go if you've been rude to the boss at the Christmas party or whatever. Maybe it is the best time to move on. Which does (laughs) happen. You you talk there about career fulfilment and so on, but don't we all know people who who have full-time jobs um, who don't particularly seem to enjoy the career that they're in and, and they see it as sufferance, that it's work. Why should they enjoy what they do for a living? Well, that's another very good question. Um, I think it's possible for everybody to enjoy what they do for a living, really. We all have different skills and experiences. So I think the first stage is to trying to identify what might, what might suit you best next. Obviously, it's not easy, but start by determining like, what's important to you in a job or a career. What sort of working environment do you, would you like to be in? Uh, what do you actually enjoy doing? Because often the things you, you enjoy doing are the things that you're good at and vice versa. So you need to try to understand yourself better, your motivation but it really is easier said than done. I often see a lot of people really struggle. They know the time is ripe for a career change, but making that move, obviously there's a amount of fear and apprehension involved and also trying to decide what to do next is, is always very difficult. Yeah, I suppose you have to be very self-analytical and self-critical. You have to really identify Absolutely. who you are as a person, where your interests lie, as you say, what, what makes you tick, what your skills are, both those hard skills and soft skills. That's right, absolutely, the, the transferable skills, because obviously you've, the career path you've been in has been fairly straightforward normally. It's chronologically proceeded along a certain logical path. But now you're looking to do something that's really quite different. I mean, it depends. You might want to move from, say, retail into marketing, or it might be more extreme. I see lots of cases of people leaving the military, for example, and going to Civvy Street. That's a more extreme mm-hmm. example. But if, whatever the case, everyone has transferable skills and abilities that they would have developed during the course of their career and their work experience. You need to sit down, identify what those are, and amongst them, what you actually enjoy doing as well, and see how they could be applied to perhaps uh, working in a different line. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's a couple of things to sort of separate out here, isn't there? It's quite one thing moving within the sector that you work in. If you're a builder, you can get a job on a different building site. If you're a lawyer, you can go and work for a different law firm. Maybe their, their working practices w- would be different. Maybe all of that would suit you. But if you're changing wholesale, if you're turning your back on being a lawyer to become a personal trainer, how on earth do you even find a route into that industry when all of your networks, all of your contacts are around one thing in particular? Going from being a lawyer to being a personal trainer, I think it's probably a fairly, fairly extreme example. But, um, <laughs> well, I do know someone the... who worked in the city for a time, worked for the Bank of England for 15 years, and then set up a personal training business because he was interested in sport, he was interested in well-being. So, uh, so pe- people do often make very dramatic changes, don't they? Absolutely, it certainly does happen. As I said, the example of moving from the military into Civvy Street, that's a fairly extreme example. There's not much on Civvy Street that relates to the military apart from security work. And lots of ex-military people often don't want to do security work. They do want to look for a change. 
So yes, I said you need to identify what your transferable skills and abilities are, and that's far easier said than done. Moving from a, a lawyer to being a personal trainer, that's a difficult <laughs> one to think what the transferable skills would well, be but, in well, that well, case. Well, this is where but, you have to you have to re- sort of reassess your whole life, I guess, in a way. You have to mm. identify what your future training needs would be. You have to be ruthless about getting contacts in a completely different industry. This is where you have to talk to other people. Absolutely. Identifying training needs is an important one, too. But most of the cases of career change I see aren't that extreme. I, say, I gave an example of someone who's worked in retail and now wants to move into marketing. Um, that's obviously a, a, different, a very different line, but there are certain links between them and the same skills, certain skills and experience will apply. So it's a case of how you draw that out. You think, what have I done during the uh, course of my previous history, which will be relevant to my new line of work? Not just the skills, but specific experiences and how to present that to a potential employee employer as well because it, obviously it's from a recruiter's point of view it's a difficult case they're used to seeing most of the time people who work in a certain line wanting to continue in it in that line mm. so trying to make your case as to what you've developed in your previous line of work which will make you suitable for the new line of work you're intending to move into and what might even make you make you very suitable because you might bring a new angle to that job and we forget to put a lot of ourselves i think sometimes into our cvs don't we a, a cv can be a very dry document that lists your educational achievements and where you've worked and what your qualifications are and so on and so forth but you can really present yourself so well in your CV give a a would-be recruiter a real glimpse into the kind of person that you are which in turn gives them hopefully a a clear idea of the kind of person they're likely to be employing and again all of those um, softer skills are, are very transferable as well if you're a great team player put that in your CV if you're terrifically well organized then put that in your CV I would argue or even better, try to find specific examples where you've demonstrated mm. those skills because anyone can just say I'm a great team player and to the point where it's almost like my cliche on CVs, but rather try to give examples in your experience, even if it's, I say, in a different line of work to the one you're now looking to work in, but to give examples where you have worked well as a part of a, part of a team or you have organized things. If you can always back things up with um, specific examples and even in some cases quantify those examples, that's going to be a lot more powerful mm. than just saying that I'm a great team player, certainly. Well, James, you've given us some great tips already on how to manage successful career change but are there others that you could share I remember when you and I talked last you talked about the the importance of networking particularly on social media getting your LinkedIn account to really work hard for you well, certainly, absolutely. When it comes to changing career, I think networking is as important, if not possibly more important, than looking for a normal job, certainly. Um, tap into your network, your network on LinkedIn, um, and not just your, your on LinkedIn, but also your personal networks on Facebook, for example. You will know a lot of people. They're not all going to be in the same line of work as you. So do reach out to those who are perhaps in the area you want to move in. Do draw on friends to give you advice to people who might already work in that sector or might know people who work in that sector and can perhaps hook you up and and um, at least get you an introductory meeting, even to discover more and to help you to decide, you know, in terms of phrasing your CV, what skills you have and what experiences you have might apply. So definitely draw on your network. I think changing careers is a difficult time for everybody. So really mm. draw on your family, your friends and your network as much as you can to support you through the process. And, and would you also advise people if, if they see a job they like the sound of, they look at the job description. I think we've all been there. We've read the job description. We thought, well, I can't do that. And I'm, I'm not really qualified in that and I've got no experience of that so I'm just not going to bother applying would you say say you know put that application in word it as best you can represent yourself in the most positive light because you never know where it takes you um, absolutely. I mean, it depends on your character. But, I mean, a lot of people will just turn something down if they think, oh, I damn, I don't meet that, meet that uh, criteria. I can't go for that. That rules that one out. I'd say go for it. Think what else might you be able to bring to the table that the recruiter might be interested in? Okay, you don't have X, Y, Z, but do you have ABC that isn't specifically mentioned in the job description, but to which you think would be of interest to them and apply to them? Uh, recruiters, when they're writing adverts and job descriptions, they're often not particularly comprehensive about it. They pick on a few key points. But do you, at thinking through it, thinking and imagining the job and imagining yourself doing that job, are there other things that you can bring to the table which would compensate for a lack of a particular criteria that they might be looking for? Certainly. I think, yeah, absolutely. Give it a shot. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Absolutely. My dad, my dad's favourite phrase of all is, well, you don't get if you don't ask. <laughs> absolutely. No, I think that's agree a more mantra to job. live by. Oh, absolutely. all right. J- James... James, um, so lovely to talk to you as ever. Uh, James Innes, who is the founder of the CV Centre and a renowned writer. In- well, 